Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Rant. Today on the show, we're going to do an unboxing of an Android-based car stereo. This is actually the cheapest Android car stereo that we were able to find on Amazon. This one here set us back about $129 Canadian, or if you're in the United States, that's about $100. It's nothing special, but it is the cheapest, and today we're going to have a look at it and see what $100 gets us for a car stereo. All right, first off, before we get too into this, we're going to go over why you might want an Android car stereo. Now, with the way car stereos have been going lately, the stereos that come from the manufacturer are, are oftentimes amazing units. They support, you know, your Android Auto, your Apple CarPlay. They support all the new fun features, Bluetooth, you know, wireless, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But sometimes you get a car that doesn't have these options, say it was a base model like my Jeep, my Jeep is a 2013 Wrangler, and yet it still doesn't have even basic things like Bluetooth. So you want an, an option to upgrade that stereo without breaking the bank. Now I could go back to Dodge and buy the upgraded stereo for mine and it would cost me about $1,200. That's obviously not something I wanna do, especially in a Jeep that just gets beaten up off road. So this option here is going to be a great option for the Jeep and actually it's this one's most likely going into my truck this is a, a unit that runs Android and has a full size touchscreen and we're gonna go over the specs actually on the side and we're gonna expect some some high quality English here so we'll uh, we'll get this up in front of the camera and that way you can see the main feature so this one here is running an Android system car multimedia player it has an HD LCD supporting 1080p video don't believe it, it's only like 480 I believe. Built-in FM AM tuner, built-in disk drive, that is surprising, most of these don't have a DVD drive. Built-in Wi-Fi module to connect to the internet, which is awesome. Supported internet app download, install and uninstall, so basically you can run apps. Built-in DVR function for an external camera. I don't know if I actually got the one with the camera, but we're going to find out. Um, car mirror link, which is nice actually. This supports the full mirroring of your Android phone. Uh, let's see, iOS support by hotspot, built-in navigation function, built-in Bluetooth, supporting U-Disc mini card functions, uh, front and reversing cameras, steering wheel control function, which is nice. We're going to see if we can't get that working. Subwoofer output, EQ, high power output, last memory function, pretty standard stuff. So across the bottom, it's gonna tell you what you need. It's got, it runs on 12 volt, pretty standard. It has a seven color backlight. We're actually super curious to see if that works. It does support a remote control with an IR blaster. Not sure who uses that function. All of these seem to have it. I have no idea who's using it. Honestly, if you use the remote control for your car stereo, please leave a comment in the, in the comment section below. I really wanna see what it's used for. Uh, obviously a front view camera, aux in, equalizer band, and a subwoofer. Uh, on this side of the box, it says it has the DVR connect, the navigation, the mirror link, seven color backlight, 1080p. Again, 1080p refers to its output. It can do 1080 output to a screen in the back. It does not do 1080 on the front screen. Uh, music, RMV, high definition, U disc card, all this stuff is the same stuff that was on the side. Uh, nothing different on this side, all the same, all the same stuff. And yeah, we're gonna see, we're gonna see how crappy it is. So first of all, pop this bad boy open here. Again, this is uh, the first time I've opened it. I'll set this aside. This appears to be all the cables and connectors that you're gonna need to, uh, to set it up. Actually, no, this is the rear camera. So this here is the uh, rear view camera. So we're actually gonna open this and see what we've got inside. This is the uh, the AV cable. If any of you are familiar with um, audio visual stuff, this is just a, an old school comp cable with a uh, 12 volt power on the end of it so that you can run power to the camera. This here is the connector that you have to apparently manually wire in. And as, if I recall, I can actually wire this so that it only gets power when the transmission goes in reverse, but I'm not sure we're gonna find out. And then this here is going to be the tiniest little camera. You know what? It's still a camera. It's still, look at that. If you can see that there, there's not a whole lot to it. It's about the size of a quarter. It does have a little set screw and a, and a rotating hinge there. I can still do stuff with it. So 
yeah, and there's my power input, of course, and my, my RCA input. So that's the camera system. So this unit did come with a camera, making this a better and better deal as we go through. Um, let's take a look and see what else is in the box. All right, now it's actually kind of funny. As we're going through things here, uh, Chinese stuff is, is nefarious for being very low quality, very, very poorly made. Manuals are usually non-existent, if anything, and the English is usually really, really bad on it. But this one here is, honestly, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is the most high quality piece of the entire unit. This is the car stereo manual, uh, in case you weren't aware of how to use an Android system. This is all glossy page. This is all half sheet, eight and a half by 11. This is really well done. Like it has, I've, I've already gone through it here. All the, all the options are on it. All the how to is on it. It gives you, you know, how to set up Wi-Fi, how to set up a radio station, how to save a radio station, how to run the file manager inside of Android, um, how to change your scaling, how to change, they are a big fan of Bon Jovi. I don't know if you can see that. And booty music is is in the tracks that they list there. Uh, and, and, and Captain America, apparently. Um, this is actually really well done. This is surprising. This is the owner's manual for how to use your new Android deck. All right, moving on. That was just unexpectedly good. All right, let's, uh, let's see here. Let's, you know what, we're going to dump it upside down. There we go. There's the box. We'll set that aside. And my other stack of boxes. This is the big fucking sheet of cardboard. All right, sure. Um, all right. So here's the unit itself. Oh, before we get to it, just because I'm a cock tease, let's go through the cables. This here is the GPS module. Um, yep, a GPS antenna. It connects onto the back of the stereo with the little, uh, it's not a BNC, it's an SMC connector. This here should be magnetized. It should clip onto wherever. I run this just on top of the stereo. It doesn't need um, full line of sight to a satellite system. It can go through plastic. It doesn't go through metal well. Some people run this outside their car. Some people run it inside. But this is the GPS antenna. Um, so we'll set that over here. <clears throat> Let's see what else is here. Now this here is where all the magic happens. Oh, there's, the, there's our remote. Let's see here. So let's go through this. This is our IR based remote control. So as you can see, or not, there we go. Um, you can do all the controls with it, all the numbers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just a cheap little Chinese remote. These are pretty standard. It has some interesting functions on it, though. You can see it's got a hang up and a call button on it. That's weird. Um, it has, does have an IQ, uh, uh, an EQ option. It does have play, stop, next track, etc., etc. It appears to have some camera zooming on it. It's got an angle. It's got a OSD. It's got yeah, it's interesting. We'll see what that does. And it's got uh, a home button option on it too. And of course, the little paper tab across the bottom here that you pull out. And uh, as soon as you pull it out, that battery is now connected. They do it so that the battery doesn't die during shipping. I'm assuming if I was to open this, it's like a CR3032 or 2032. It is gone is what it is. Now, it is a CR2025, actually, which means it's going to be harder for you to find a battery when it breaks. But whatever. Like I said, no one uses these. And the last thing that was in the bag that's not the head unit is going to be the actual wiring harness itself for the stereo. So we'll take a look at that. And of course, it's in two bags. Pretty standard. You need one of these to wire any sort of car stereo up. It's all well labeled here. Um, yep, there is a backwards camera control. Pretty standard. Red, black, and yellow are your power for your consistent ground and your 12 volts. And then your green, your gray, your white, and your purple are all your, your stereo outputs. So the stripe is ground and uh, the non-stripe color being hot. Last I checked. Uh, steering wheel controls are here. We're going to see if we can't get those hooked up. Now, those usually require a module, a CAN bus module, or something to that effect because they are a very odd way of controlling, but it can be done. Uh, this one here is for COM1 and COM2, so we'll have to see what those specifically do. Um, this one here is, yep, there's our, back, our backup camera sensor. Our brake detect, haha. <laughs> now this is fun, if you've ever wired up a car stereo before, and I'm assuming this one here will have an option to do it in the software as well. In theory, 
The applications in video are only supposed to work if the parking brake is set. So what this does is this goes to your ground wire on your parking brake so that when you pull up the parking brake, it enables those features. Almost all of these get soldered straight to the ground wire because there's no, need, there's no reason if you're wiring it yourself to, to worry about that. Also, many of these Android decks, you can do it in the software. You can do it, oh, that's actually something I meant to mention in this. On the back of this, it lists all the admin passwords, which is sweet for the developer mode because many times the options like the car brake are all set in the developer options. So they give you the password to get into the developer options on this deck. That's actually really nice. All right, let's move to the stereo itself. So here we go. It's actually very well packed. Lots of foam, like very thick, dense foam and a plastic front plate cover. Another more dense foam. This, this looks better than expected. This is gonna run like crap because this is built way too well for it to be anything good. Um, this is all black steel. Like, let's open this up. This is taped really well. But this is all black. Normally you get these things and they're actually, uh, they're actually silver. Now, of course, if you've ever, yeah, this has a DVD drive. This is, this is significantly better than expected. Okay, so if you've ever gotten a CD drive um, like this, you'll notice these two set screws here. Pretty standard is you pull these things out so that you can fire it up. Now these things here will go in through the unit and lock the optical drive so that it doesn't move during shipping. Screws like this here, you can't really see them very well. That's what they do. All right, let's take a look at our complement of ports on the back. Man, this thing is better than expected. Okay, so complement of ports on the back. We're gonna have such things as video in, video out. We're gonna have a TV in. This is actually a BNC connection. I have no idea who's putting that in their car, but whatever. Um, front camera options here, that's the orange. Um, our various uh, preamp outs, our video ins, our video outs. Uh, the fuse option. This, there's clearly an option for an iPod. This here is actually labeled iPod connector. And then this here is the one that the main connector goes into um, to hook up to your power in, in that, uh, that, that header. Again, this is better than expected. This, I, I expected this thing to be a piece of crap. Um, let's see if we can get this without some glare on it there. It's not so bad. So it does have uh, hardware buttons that feel pretty decent. These buttons here have all got solid click to them. This is not bad. This is really not the shittiest thing I've ever worked on. So uh, I'm gonna actually hook this up here. I've actually got a 12 volt power supply. I'm gonna hook this up. I'm gonna move the camera around a little bit so we can get a, a video right on of this. I'm not gonna do a full wiring job. I'm just gonna wire up the power, but we're gonna see what happens. And uh, yeah, uh, so far I'm impressed. So I'm assuming everything inside of it is crap if the outside packaging is this nice. But anyways, yeah, let's uh, let's cut away to uh, uh, to a time lapse video of me wiring this thing up and not killing myself, and we'll go from there. All right, so thanks to the magic of computer editing, I have now hooked this up to our uh, Pyramid Cheapo Chinese power supply. This one here is a uh, it'll actually do f 14 volts, I think. Uh, but anyways, it'll pull 12 for this function here. And we're going to fire this thing up and see if it sucks. So let's see how it goes. Now, in theory, it should fire up by itself. But sometimes the first time it's on these things. Nope, here we go. Let's see here. Now, I don't have speakers hooked up. So if you're expecting a, a vast multimedia experience, it ain't going to happen. So this is the old... Android boot logo. Now this is supposed to come with Android 5.0.1 so we're gonna see what it actually comes with. Alright, pretty standard precaution. Hey, don't watch porn while you're driving. Um, all the parking brake stuff and I don't have the parking brake turned on so I mean that I probably should have done. Alright, so this is uh, yeah, this is our Android dashboard. That didn't take too long to boot up. Now normally these things will keep uh, keep running in a very low power mode when your car is turned off. So that I haven't had a problem with. But let's take a look here. So we've got a home button, two home buttons for some reason. There we've got our swipe down for our, uh, oh, we've got a reboot, standby, Wi-Fi. Now this is supposed to have Wi-Fi in it. So let's see if it picks up my Wi-Fi here at the house. 
There we go, Wi-Fi, click and hold. <clears throat> now it is picking up my neighbor's Wi-Fi. There we go, a land before time. That's me. Now I'm not expecting it to pick up my five gigahertz Wi-Fi. That's, I mean, really. I'm not expecting too much for this thing. Like I said, based on everything else earlier, I'm expecting this to be a piece of crap. Um, so it does have, uh, oh yeah, the dim button actually just turns off the uh, the backlight. Actually pretty nice if you're driving at night. Um, you don't really notice it until you're driving at night basically staring at a fucking iPad. Um, so the Bluetooth, I'm assuming, br bling, brings up our Bluetooth pairing. DVD, I'm assuming, brings up Maybe that's the eject button. There. No, it just doesn't click as hard. The build quality isn't perfect. It's better than some, but it's not perfect, that's for sure. Um, so let's go in here. Let's check out our display. <clears throat> oh, you can set it to auto black screen so that it does go off after a certain time period. Let's check our storage. This here was a 16 gig model, which is not too bad, honestly, for the usage on it. Like I said, it's just going in the either the truck or the Jeep, and neither of them are premium vehicle so I don't need a 64 or a 32 gig model um, so yeah that's fine for for what I've got now it does support both a media card and a GPS card um, they're basically just two different SD card options but they are options you'll see actually up over here and up over here one's labeled GPS one's labeled SD I've never used the GPS for what they're listing it's for so I don't know if it runs different somebody may want to correct me on that I think it's just an SD card apps that are downloaded is just the iGo software and then the Android running apps location access security unknown sources they've already got it checked because they know it's pretty Chinese language and input pretty standard stuff back up and reset this is where it's asking for that password and let's actually give it a try this one here should be three three six eight ten three three six eight ten bucks says that this is running a rock chip three three six eight chip which is a lower powered Android chip. That wouldn't surprise me. That's the password. Uh, yep, pretty standard stuff. It does read as a phone. You'll notice here it says uh, reset all data on phone. Let's see if I can't get this zoomed in a little bit better. Let's see here. Just so you guys can, can look a little bit better. Do, 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 do. Let's change that focus a bit. Let's see if she'll auto focus on something this close. Anyways, so uh, date and time is going to be here. Pretty standard stuff. It's all basically Android stuff. Developer options are already enabled. Three, three, six, eight. Yep. And you've got your SD card stuff. HDCP checking. If for some reason you wanted to do that, mock locations are fine. Debugs, verify apps. Show touches, pretty standard stuff. I'm assuming there will be an e-brake option here. It's been my experience in the past. Nope, there doesn't appear to be, but we, it might be in another spot. So let's go to About Phone. So this is actually running Android 5.11. I haven't had anything that's run this in a while. It's an older version of Android. This is running a Cortex A9 quad core with a Mali 400. I want to say that's the Rock Chip 3368. Somebody can correct me on this one too. Without Googling it real quick, I want to say that that's what it is. Um, serial number is all zeros as they oftentimes are. So yeah, this is not that shitty. And especially given the price, like this is pretty decent. So we're going to actually connect in here and I'm actually going to... Uh, uh, run some tests on YouTube. I'm gonna sign it into my Wi-Fi here, uh, and then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna fire up YouTube. The radio I'm assuming doesn't work for shit because I don't have a radio hooked up to it. But yeah, so I'm yeah I'm gonna pause the video for a second. I'm gonna sign it up to my Wi-Fi. Where's the home button here? And uh, we're gonna see how this thing handles things like Netflix and Plex and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So I'll be back in just one second and. Uh, We'll see what we can do with the uh, with the Wi-Fi turned on. All right, welcome back. I've actually done a few things uh, since I was hooking up to the Wi-Fi. One, I hooked up to the Wi-Fi, and two, I hooked up to my uh, Google Play account. Now, it did have the older icon here, 
Now you'll notice it does have the much newer Google Play Store uh, and it seemed to update just fine. A few things are missing though and it oftentimes happens with screens with lower resolution. It doesn't give me the option to install certain applications. Plex wasn't an option. YouTube wasn't an option. But I'm not too worried about that because most of these things I can get by pulling the APK file, the installer files, from the internet. It's not a big deal. Now you'll also notice I've hooked up a keyboard and mouse. You'll notice my little Logitech receiver right there. Um, because for all intents and purposes in this video, it does make a lot more sense to use the keyboard and mouse once you've got it all set up. I also put an SD card in this machine so that I can install a few things and show you how it works. Now Google Chrome, like I said, worked fine. When we open it up, it actually has a nice little interface to it. Um, it gives me local news. I'm not signed into my account, but it knows based on my IP address where I am. It does give me the option to go to the web-based YouTube, Facebook, Wikipedia, all that fun stuff. So we're going to see what the File Explorer browser is like on this thing, and we're going to see if we can't install an APK file off the... Oh, there we go. That was actually really quick. So I've put a couple of videos on here. We're going to see how the uh, the video manager is, but I've also got the, uh, the YouTube uh, installer file. And you know what? It gives me the standard, the standard options for it here. We're going to click Next, and then Install, and it's installing. We're going to see if it, uh, if it logs into my, uh, my account in a second here, but uh, it looks to be going okay. Again, like I mentioned before, this isn't the fastest processor in the world, so some things that are more intensive do take a little time. And that's why we're going to try some videos here. I've got an episode of Rick and Morty. Uh, we're going to fire it up and we're going to see how it looks. So that's installed and worked fine. In theory, see, and we get this. We get this unsub... Oh, hey, no, I've got the... Uh, uh, the video driving error message. Let me see if we can't uh, if we can't hook that up. In the meantime, let's uh, let's see if we can swipe down from the top here, and let's see if we can open up YouTube. Now the uh, the application that supported videos didn't work. It thinks we're driving because the e-brake ground wire is not hooked up. But let's see if we can't uh, get YouTube working. All right, now YouTube just loaded. That did take a second, uh, but we do have all the standard uh, YouTube videos here. And let's take a look here. It does support Chromecast because it is uh, an Android box, if nothing else. And let's see how the uh, the movies look. Now, this doesn't same store does not have the ground wire set up, and it appears to be working fine. So it's only applications that have a ground wire control signal built in or software set up for it that seem to have this problem. Now, this seems to be working fine. I don't have the speaker set up, um, and it's probably not running 1080, but let's have a look. Let's see what it lists. Let's see here, do to do to do, quality 480, and that's probably as high as it's gonna go because it knows it's a 480 screen. But realistically, this looks great. Um, this actually, like, overall, it, it, it could be, this is a really, okay, so this is the video I've chosen to play. Anyways, uh, overall, this thing here looks, uh, this thing looks and performs amazing given the price point of it. It's a $129 device. Um, it did come with the backup camera. I'm not going to try a DVD on it because I frankly don't care. The screen itself is a little smaller because it's surrounded by buttons, but I do like having the physical buttons. We have another one of these in the F-150, and it doesn't have the buttons, and frankly, I kind of miss the buttons, or it doesn't have as many buttons. Um, and a couple people have ordered ones that were all screen, and this, this standard thing is, hey, I wish it had more buttons. You know, the volume control works well. You know, uh, the mute button works well on it. This is probably the best $129 I've spent recently. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have liked this review. It has gone on a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. I didn't plan on hooking it all up today, but I did find the power supply, so it only took a second to hook it up and show you guys what it was like. So, hopefully that answers some of your questions. I will see if I can't find the model number on this thing, but quite honestly... Oh man, it's really hard to do. Let's see if I can't uh, if I can't pull something up real quick here. Um, overall, though, especially if you're in Canada, the the problem with being in Canada is stuff can take forever to get in from China, and you don't have the selection on Amazon that you have in the states. 
So many times you're stuck with whatever happens to give you prime. Um, so this has been this has been great for me. You know, it shipped in you know a day and a half, and let's see if we can't get the model number for it here. Yeah, the model number on this is the most Asian thing I've ever. It claims it's a 6.2 inch screen, and I don't believe it. But it's called the Nandalu N A L A D O O, or sorry, Naladu Naladu, uh, 6.2 inch double DIN GPS 1080p Android system with backup camera. And it's sold by a place called Natalie Shop, which means their name is not anywhere. It's pretty much just a reseller. But yeah, so this is the $129 deck. If you have any comments or questions or anything like that, please leave them below. Uh, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it means people are watching my videos and I will start putting out more videos more often. But yeah, hopefully that uh, I've showed you exactly what you can do with one of these Android decks. This is just a basic go through. Maybe I'll do some more advanced stuff one day. Um, but they're just a great little option for $129. By the time I'll get this installed in the truck, I'll be into it for $150, including the wiring harness. And it gives you just such a great, just a, such a great platform. It brings your vehicle up to you know current generation standards. It, it gives you all the options that you could ever want from a car stereo. But uh, anyway, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, ring that little bell if you want to see, get notified whenever I release a new video. And uh, I will talk to you next time. Again, thanks for tuning in.